We all have those drumming frustrations, the things that can cause us to become impatient with ourselves as players, or that can even trigger performance anxiety when it comes time for the gig. Maybe it's something specific like, I can't get my hi-hat to sound right, I can't get it to sound smooth, or I can't get enough low end or punch or beef out of my kick drum. Or it could be something more conceptual like, why do I keep practicing every day and I'm not getting any better? Or what do I practice? I don't know what to practice. I don't know how to use my practice time wisely. These are all very valid questions and frustrations here. So the purpose of today's video is ultimately to hear from you guys. So go ahead and comment down below what your biggest drumming frustration is. By the way, to those who voted and commented on the poll earlier this week, thanks so much for your input. I'm using all of that input and the input I've gotten from patrons on Patreon and from the comments here to tailor future content to hopefully help you guys out as much as I can. So while you guys tell me your frustrations, I will tell you five of mine. Here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. This is the channel that provides you with all the non-glamorous tips and topics of the trade to help teach you the skills that really matter to help you become a better drummer. If you're new to the channel, I really hope you'll subscribe. So frustration number one, I live in an apartment and so I have to practice quietly. That's kind of a enough said, you understand the frustration. How many practice quietly is always frustrating. The funny thing about that is the whole apartment life as a drummer has really been a lot of what's uh, inspired this channel. That's kind of a lot of the, the story behind why I started the channel a year ago. And so that's something that I've wanted to help you guys out a lot with. I've made a lot of videos about, and so that's been a big story behind the creation of this channel. Now, having said that, that's still frustrating because practicing quietly is never ideal. We never want to have to practice quietly on pads or quiet cymbals or anything. We want to make noise. We want to play just like we perform. But sometimes there's not a way around that. And so that's still something frustrating for me every time I sit down and practice. But I've learned to deal with it and I've learned to make the most out of it so that I can still productively practice even with the setup here in the apartment. Number two, here's something that really drove me crazy in high school and getting into college when I was starting to play with bands and getting outside of my practice room. Um, constant rushing where my playing felt frantic or panicked and felt like it was always pushing ahead just a little bit and never really relaxed into a tempo, into a pocket. I would just be playing a song and I would realize at some point in the song that we are 10 clicks faster, but I'm not sure exactly how we got 10 clicks faster. I don't remember speeding up, but it's just gotten faster. And that's something I still work on, keeping my playing nice and relaxed and smooth where it feels good because that's crucial as a drummer. We've got to play time that feels good. And so that was a huge frustration then and something that I had to spend a lot of time working on and something I still work to improve. Number three, so I think this is one that a lot of us can relate to. And even on an ongoing basis sometimes, my drums sound bad and I don't know why. A lot of us have good drums. We've got good quality drums. Maybe we could afford a really nice kit. We've got the right heads on it, but it's just not sounding like we want it to sound. It's not sounding like our favorite record. All these issues that usually revolve around tuning and muffling and that whole topic, we're just not able to quite get our grasp on how to get our drum set sound as best as we can. Now this can still be a frustration on an ongoing basis because sometimes I'll take my drums into a, a new venue or new room and they won't sound the way they did here in the apartment or in that last room I was in because the room size is different. You've got different frequency interactions and maybe you're losing some low end or you're gaining some low end. Sometimes you just have to tune your drums for that specific room to make them work in that room. And so this can be a frustration that's never ending. You just have to learn how to deal with it. Number four, here's a good one. I call it the frustration of the off day. We've all had off days, whether it's a gig at the end of a busy day and we're just tired, or we've got a lot of gigs in one day and so we're just worn out, or we're just not able to focus. There's something else going on in life distracting us. Sometimes we're not able to give it our all. And uh, so many things can contribute to an off day, but something interesting that I've noticed can contribute to an off day for me is actually an ergonomic problem with the drum set. So sometimes an off day can be as simple as that, just a physical ergonomical thing where you're having to deal with a kit that's not comfortable. And if you're not comfortable at the kit, you're probably not gonna play comfortably. Frustration number five here kind of goes along with some previous things, but I just thought I would specifically mention this because it plagued me a lot. Why do my hi-hats not sound right? How come when I played the hi-hats, it just sounds stiff and clumsy and not smooth? Why do they not sound right? So that was something that really bothered me and I had to pay a lot of attention to how my favorite drummers were playing the hi-hats, how they were getting smooth sounds and clean sounds and really adjust my playing technique and adjust how I actually had the hi-hats adjusted to help get that hi-hat sound I wanted a little bit closer to perfection where it at least felt good within the groove. So those were my big five frustrations. There are definitely a lot more, but I had to condense it down into five that 
I know have been a big deal for me and I think a lot of you guys can probably relate to and it'll help get you thinking in terms of what your frustrations are so you can comment below with yours. So yeah, tell me what yours are in the comments below. Let's get a conversation started. And you know, I think this is the ultimate non-glamorous topic because we're really getting into nitty gritty stuff here, but these are very real frustrations and problems that I think we all deal with. I'm constantly having to solve these frustrations every day, and so I just wanna share with you my knowledge to save you time and to save you frustrations. So tell me what your frustrations are. I wanna help build this channel around dealing with this non-glamorous side of drumming, which is dealing with frustrations and problems. So help me out and I will help you out. I'll greatly appreciate your input, guys. So as always, thank you for watching and subscribers, thanks so much for watching my videos and for commenting and sharing and everything you guys do you guys are great also check out a couple of those other videos i've referenced throughout this video i've got links in the comments below and if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed i hope i've earned your subscription i hope you found a lot of my videos helpful and interesting toward you and your drumming so i really hope you'll subscribe and here's a link to the patreon go check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel and helping to continue to make possible what I'm doing here for you guys. Um, in return, I've got cool rewards and extra content that I give out to you guys there on Patreon, so go check that out if you haven't already. Guys, that is all for today. I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Take care.